The Spin-Off Podcast Network. Skinny are helping you show how smart you are with the 1Q Quiz, an all-new, super-challenging and super-quick daily quiz built by The Spin-Off. Every Monday, Skinny are giving you the chance to prove you're smart with the Skinny Extra Credit question. Get it right and you'll get the chance to score yourself some Skinny Extra mobile credit so you can text, call or even video call your group chat and gloat about how big your brain is. T's and C's apply. The Fold is brought to you by O-Media, making brands unmissable and public spaces better across Aotearoa. No mai hoki mai ki a The Fold e mihi me ko Duncan Gree talk going wa. Uh, back in 2022, and my first guest is on my the the, the topic I picked in our super pod is the the storyline I'm most excited about in 2022. Uh, I have Dallas Gurney, who is the director of uh, news and talk at MediaWorks, uh, which in practice means he's overseeing the launch of Today FM, which is the newest talk radio brand uh, replaces Magic Talk, which sort of fell down a sort of a well of of racism and misinformation and just kind of really didn't work. And honestly, that's been the fate of talk radio brands that aren't named News Talk ZB in this country. It's just, it's a really, really hard market and they've created and carefully nurtured a juggernaut of, of talent and audience that has just that just rides serenely atop the uh, the sort of radio charts. The thing that feels different about Today FM is just the caliber of the talent involved. You've got Tovaro O'Brien, you know, not, notwithstanding the fact that it's going to take a bit longer to launch because of her ERA case. Uh, you've got Duncan Garner, you've got Leah Panape, you've got Mark Richardson, Lloyd Burr. This is, you know, in terms of the prominence of that talent and their ability to kind of capture the the public mood and, and hit precisely on big issues, that, that's just a stronger lineup than has ever gone up against ZB. And Dallas is at pains to say that this is a centrist thing and they're not going up against ZB. And I sort of believe him in some respects and that they're not trying to outflank ZB to the right by any means. Uh, they tried that. It did not work with Magic Talk. But there is definitely like a we are wanting to be the place where when something happens, you go to it and and if you like it, you stick around because you sort of understand the, the framing and the urgency and the quality of the thing. Uh, so Dallas was, and in fact, and we talk about this, was the, the, the director of ZB and Radio Sport at uh, NZME. So he knows intimately the strategy of the rival. In fact, one of his best friends is... Uh, uh, Jason, who is the um, who has basically got got his role um, at ZB, so this is basically the biggest swing anyone has taken in New Zealand media in, in quite a while, and it's unfortunate that you know I think it was due to launch, you know as, as soon as next week that's been delayed because uh, of the of of Discovery enforcing Tover O'Brien's restraint of trade. I've written about that. I think it's a, a sort of a bad and, and, in fact, quite a chilling decision that the RA has made. And I think it was just it's just bad optics, bad talent management, the the decision by Discovery to enforce it. But ultimately, it's six weeks in what they claim is a five, ten, fifteen year project. And as much as like five years ago or ten years ago, you go FM radio is not going to last that long. But it just keeps hanging around and. I think Dallas has got some interesting things to say about you know this building this brand that they want it to be an audio focused thing that they are clearly super interested in, in podcasting and the whole audio space like rather than having a, a a sort of a talk radio brand that that sort of tries to spread out into different forms of news and on the in the digital space they they seem like they're very much focused on audio and. I do think that ZB, for all its extraordinary skill it's shown in, in staying atop the FM ratings, it hasn't really gone into either podcasting or digital in a particularly profound way. And that, that does feel like an opportunity for today FM. 
So this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun discussion about a medium that is really stands apart from the whole rest of the media. Uh, and and I'm, I sort of am quite fascinated by it. The Fold is, once again, brought to you by Vodafone. I'm so, so grateful that they are supporting us again for another year. Uh, if you run a business or indeed if you run a household and you're looking for some uh, some internet, some, some network connections, um, please go to Vodafone.co.nz and check them out. I've got it at home. I've got it at work. It's good stuff. Uh, this is Dallas Gurney on The Fold. Uh, kia ora, Dallas, and uh, welcome to The Fold. Kia ora. Great to be here. Thanks, yeah. Duncan. No, thank you. Thanks for coming along. It's the first episode of the year, and it's my favorite uh, favorite story of, of the year <laughs> is, is, is Today FM and uh, the challenge it represents to one of the biggest established hegemonies in New Zealand media. Uh, I'm assuming really relaxing start of the, of the year for you. No, <laughs> oh, nothing, to, no, nothing to report. Nothing to report. Absolutely nothing to report. No, very quiet. Um, I was certainly quiet from now on for the next six weeks because we were kind of set ready to go um, on the 2nd. That was going to be our initial kind of launch date. Uh, and obviously now we've got a, a few more weeks up our sleeve, which isn't a bad thing. But having said that, it would have been good to have it on the air. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you, you sort of miss the, the the sort of big political side of the year. And I think with with Tova as, as that kind of statement high, that's unavoidably and quite rationally going to be the, the sort of heart of the, the station in a lot of ways. Uh, what, what you know, how, yeah, how frustrated were you to kind of see that? I mean, a lot of people I spoke to were, were quite shocked, A, that it got to that point, and then B, B at the ruling itself. Yeah, I mean, at, at its core, the, I mean, the deci- we were surprised at the decision. Um, but, it, I mean, at its core is what's competition. And, you know, that's, as you know, really murky. I mean, we're here doing a, a podcast. Are you on, in competition with, you know, radio broadcasters? You've got a pretty flash set up here. <laughs> it's more impressive than I thought. But I think we would both agree that you're not. <laughs> this is not your bread and butter. This is not what you do every day. And I think that's the core of the issue. I mean, it, it's been very clear in the past where your your primary competition lie. And that's... Um, if you're a TV operator, your primary competition is a t- another TV network, radio, radio, you know, um, arguably digital the same. Um, what this decision has said is that uh, everyone is competing and um, our argument has been that that's on the margins still. Not to say in the future it won't be the case, but when you look at, you know, um, the percentage of revenue that comes from kind of Digital, for example, at MediaWorks is very small in comparison to you know traditional media, so we don't believe that's the case. Yeah, the thing that's that sort of feels kind of chilling about it to me is the fact that the the media as an employer, like if you just look at its revenues, the number of people employed, the sort of average compensation of people at particular levels, it has been shrinking. No, and radio has been much more insulated that than that from it than any other part of the traditional media. But fundamentally, it it seems strange that you've got an industry that is, you know, by, by some metrics it'll be almost viewed as collapsing um, and that the ERA has then gone, as a consequence of that, another thing you have to worry about is the, <laughs> is the fact that this now much smaller industry uh, should, should have a, a much greater web of constraints, uh, potential constraints placed upon it in terms of from an employment perspective. Well, it's even broader than the media. I mean, that's, this, this decision goes even wider than that. Absolutely. Um, it says that if you have a restraint in your contract, well, this is my reading of it anyway, if you have a restraint in your contract, then um, you a great, a great example of this, which I think is just perfect. Tova's lawyer used this example in the ERA, which is that if you were, work, if you were, if you were KFC, if you're a customer of KFC and you're driving home and you thought, you know, I, I'm really hungry and I'll... Oh, I'll go, I'll go through the drive through at KFC. Arguably, you could change your mind and say, oh, no, I'm going to go to the French cafe, right? Arguably, you could do that. You could change and 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 go to a, you know, a, a flash restaurant. That's something you could do. Well, I mean, but, yeah. But, but you wouldn't, right? And and our argument is if you're, a, if you're a radio listener, 
you're not going to necessarily be – we're not competing for the same – for a completely different medium at breakfast in particular than, than for example, AM and the AM show. Um, so, Which wasn't yeah. even Tova's primary – no, which was not yeah, anyway. That's before you even take that. <laughs> yeah. Take that yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, but ultimately, it just gives you sort of six weeks oh. more to, and and even well before you know any of this um, became public, you were already talking about this not being a one year or a three year no, play. Right. It's five, ten, yeah, fifteen years, um, and we'll talk about radios. Uh, what fifteen years of, of radio or, or of a. A, a new talk-driven media brand, shall we say, looks like in a bit. But what I wanted to um, to start by asking was was what drew you back to radio? Because you you had a long time as yeah. like an editorial lead at uh, ZB and Radio Sport, then went off to run drama and, and some communications work. Radio has a hold over people, and obviously has its hooks in you to to pull you back. Yeah, I mean, I thought I was done with radio, to be honest. Um, I I kind of my dream job was running um, had been my whole you know career ever since a kid listening to you know talk back as a kid very young you know <laughs> young yeah. to the format yeah but um, I'd always wanted to um, run ZB and Radio Sport and I thought when I got kind of out that I would be out for good um, but I've always obviously you know kept an ear on it and. Um, uh, the opportunity, I guess, to start, start something new. I mean, Cam got me really super excited about it again, you know, and I kept thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that, you know. Oh, you know. And, and you don't get a chance to start with a blank sheet of paper, you know, fully funded, ready to go um, very often. And so from my perspective, I thought, well, I'm always going to regret it if I don't do it. So I'll dive back in again. I, I tell you what, it's the best decision I've ever made. It's great to be back. I love it. How yeah. have your your colleagues at ZB uh, responded to the fact that you're building? I know that um, you know you and Cam are sort of at pains to say this isn't yeah about ZB, mm. but it's at ninety point two, <laughs> two on your <laughs> FM dial in Auckland, yeah. and uh, you don't spend all that money. You know, in the talk space, hmm. knowing that ZB exists without on some level thinking that's a juggernaut, that's a commercial and a sort of mindshare juggernaut, you know, we think that there is, there's room for more than one there. Yeah. So um, the guy that took my job at, at ZB is Jason Wynn Stanley, and he's my best friend. So, um, we, Dirty netball player, by the way. He is, yeah, he is. Really yeah. just, I, the I, leg goes out, it's just, it's, it's unclean <laughs> what he does. But Jace, I mean, Jace and I have always, um, you know, talked work and, you know, it's been very central to our relationship. So I was, I was worried when I took this job that it would, you know, impact our friendship. Um, I, you know, it was a real concern and I talked to him about it beforehand to say, you know, th- this is the reason why I wouldn't do this is because... Uh, but I, I forgot the fact that we're both incredibly competitive and we love getting one, you know, something over each other. Yeah. So, yeah, that it adds a whole new competitive element <laughs> to the friendship, which is actually really enjoyable. Um, to your point about ZB, I mean, I think, I, I mean, I, I love ZB. I listen to ZB a lot uh, and I'm very... Um, I mean, the people that that I worked with there, the relationships that I'll never forget. I mean, Leighton, if you had, if you had said to me that uh, when I when I took in that, on that job that you know Leighton Smith, who's a lot older than me, um, would become a very good friend and we'd we'd still be great friends, you know, to this day, I would have said you're dreaming. You know, in fact, if there was one person that I was terrified about when I started at ZB, it was Leighton. You know, how am I going to manage this guy? But uh, it turned out to be not the case at all. Um, uh, so I, I think that, you know, after a while you become less concerned about what others uh, are doing and more concerned about the rela- the relationships that you have and that, that supersedes kind of the, the roles that you have, the people that you work for, you know. I mean, the, the, the thing with today is we want to build a talk brand unencumbered by having an audience, a, an audience that it's already got, you know. So, again, it's a blank sheet of paper. You, you, the struggle when you're running ZB is you've got to reinvent 
while keeping the audience that you've got. That's always, you know, a difficult situation. Which which implies that the audience that you do have right now, because right now there is a talk station as part mm. of Media Works called it's called Magic Talk. Mm. Uh, it certainly has gone from being something that MediaWorks was quite excited about. It wasn't all that long ago that uh, you know that Radio Live was rebranded to Magic Talk, and um, and now you know there seems like quite a distancing going on. What what was wrong with Magic Talk? Do you think to to the point where you needed to scrap the brand, basically tear down everything that it was, and and rebuild something new in its place? Well, one of the things that I did when I first came on board is go, well, what can we learn about what we've done in the past? You know, between a bit of rich history of talk radio at, at MediaWorks, you know, right back to Radio Pacific. Mm. Um, and some of it was has been done exceptionally well, and some of it has been not so good. So what can we learn from that? And I guess... You know, when it comes to particularly Radio Live and particularly Magic Talk, you cannot be ZB. You know, and, and, and these are brands that we're trying to essentially out ZB ZB. And I don't think you can, you can, you can do well. You'll, you'll always, if you do that, be seen as being kind of second. And so if we, you know, find a different way in, if we find a different audience, if we, you know, look to be, you know, completely different from, from our competitors, that, um, you know, we, we start to row our own walker, you know, and be, you know, able to control our own destiny instead of just chasing, you know, chasing all the time another competitor. Uh, that's the intent. So what, what is the, so pitch today FM to me, if, if yep. I'm an audience member, if I'm a, a, an advertiser, what, what, what is the, the shape of this thing? So I think there's a whole audience with talk that, um, that is currently not served. Uh, if you look at speech, based content. I mean, this podcast is a good example of it. You know, people in their in their 30s and 40s, um, they are consuming more speech-based content than ever before, you know, through digital media and podcasts. But it's not reflected in the terrestrial model. Um, you know, talk radio around the world is, is generally seen as a conservative beast, you know, right-leaning, you know, big, big, you know, brash personalities, um, driven out of a big breakfast show, you know, with a with a big name um, who kind of speaks the audience's truth. And what we're trying to do today, I think I think in this country in particular, what we're trying to do with today is New Zealanders are much more centred than that. <laughs> you know, New Zealanders are, uh, we, 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 we kind of are able to sit uh, and make our own judgments about who's right and who's wrong and who's lying and who's not and... Um, and you know, share by the fact that you know every every nine years usually we you know kick out the government and put a new one. In. <laughs> um, we we vote from the centre as well, um, and so I don't think New Zealanders are as polarised as that. And um, we don't need to kind of we don't need to be that kind of right leaning you know mouthpiece. I think that's well covered. Um, most Kiwis sit in the centre. This is a brand that serves them. Uh, the other thing is, I think COVID is a, has a big influence on the station. The time, you know, when you look in history, you know what. I, I, I'm a big believer of this. I'm no economist, I'm no historian, but you know what comes after kind of this period of um, of you know synchronous crisis around the world. When we look in history, you know what actually comes off the back of that is a boom period. You know, after after um, World War One and the Spanish flu, you had the twenties. You know, after World War Two, you had the fifties, you know, and um, and I think that will happen here too. I don't buy into kind of the big doom and gloom, you know, global financial crisis to come. I think that we will want to get out and we'll want to reconnect with people and and you know um, and spend money. And so, having a brand that is a bit more positive and optimistic about our future, rather than kind of pressing the anger and fear emotion, not to say that ZB does that, but some media do that. I don't want to be clickbait for the year. I want to have, you know, um, good discussions, try and, trying to find solutions and resolve issues and help, you know, learn together. I mean, that sounds very lofty, but that's <laughs> that's actually what we want to do. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess that the, the, you know, it, it's, it sounds lovely and, and you can see that, you know, the the 
commercial potential of a of a more centrist. Let's concentrate on what what binds us together than, than over what tears us apart is is better. The, I guess the retort might be that that was the pitch for Radio Live, mm. and that RNZ, irrespective of what people might um, perceive in terms of its centre of gravity, would say broadly similar mm. things. So mm. you've got a, you've got a, a no, an ad free competitor um, that potentially is about to merge with TVNZ and get a lot more. Uh, resource and potentially star power as a result, and you've got a a very recent historical uh, version of it. What, why will you be different? Why, why will this one have a different fate? There's a couple of aspects to that. The first aspect is, um, I think, in building Radio Live, I think I, I think today is is completely different to Radio Live, to be honest. Um, I, and I think it's completely different in outlook. If you even look at the talent lineup in that original Radio Live talent, I mean the the breakfast host was X Talk Radio, you know. So there, were, and, and I mean we've gone for a completely different, you know, person new to talk radio, and it's purposeful um, because we think that you know Tova has got the potential and the talent to be amazing, but um, we don't want to, we want we want to take a few risks and try a few different things, and you know that's that's why she's doing the breakfast show. So I, I, I would argue that that the way we've approached it is completely different and the outlook of the station and the personality of the station when it finally gets to air is going to be completely different. But the biggest thing I think we can learn out of the Radio Live years is don't fiddle, right? So if you if Radio Live would still be going today if they had the same lineup that they did or very close to it when they first launched. I did a count, you know, when I first came on board of the ZB hosts over the Radio Live, you know, 2005, I think it was, to, to through to the Magic Talk 2020. ZB hosts, number of ZB hosts versus number of Radio Live slash Magic Talk hosts. And it was, uh, ZB had 12 and, they, and, and Radio Live Magic Talk had 39. So radio is habitual, you know, even if, even if things aren't quite the way you want them, just turning up every day and doing the same thing every day goes a long way to you know, ensuring success. And I think that was a big, fo- it, it was, a, there was a lot of tinkering. And um, what's exciting about, I guess, what we're doing is we've got, we've got the license from the CEO and the board to put our team in place to make incremental improvements over time, but largely to leave it to do its job. And that will take, you know, years Three years, five years, ten years. Hopefully, then you know it will. You know, we'll be able to see the measure of its, its success. I mean, just before, like, because I want to talk about that time frame thing. I think it's really interesting. But the just returning to, to the centrism thing, like, I don't think there's a strong argument to be made against the idea that New Zealand is broadly mm. a, a centrist uh, mm. place, particularly over the last, say, 30, 40 years. Uh, you know, the, most of the governments have governed from the centre, but there is there is something about this era, whether it's um, social media's, you know, the, the uh, you know interactions on social media are, are very much driven by uh, what you know an inflammatory statement. And if you're wanting people to listen and to call call in and uh, and you know make a statement on air or, or respond to something. Uh, yeah, this this idea of like a solution based discussions, and it feels like as as much as there might be a kind of a New Zealand exceptionalism there, is there not something that is kind of inherent to the medium, which mm. is you know you you tune into to want to be provoked or, or reassured of a particular of a particular perspective. The idea of like even even in our kind of publishing, mm. you yeah you know, we try and resist it, but there is the you know that if we published a, a more extreme uh, perspective, it's much more likely to be highly engaged with, highly responded to, and therefore elevated up the feeds uh, than you know someone coming out and saying, well, this government policy is you know there's, you know you might do this differently, but it's broadly in, in line with with where it should be. You know, like like are you. How confident you, are you that beyond the pressure to sort of tinker with the lineup that that you can resist the sort of pull to the to the extremes? Well, uh, yeah, I mean it's definitely a risk, right? I mean you start out you start out um, with kind of these ideals, and you know 
um, you've got to avoid the temptation of, of of backing back from those over time. I mean, where talkback has got to, though, I mean, you've got another, you've, if, you, if you look, even just look at the core of a format, which, you know, the bulk of the hours on, on a talk radio station in the past has been talk back. Even if you look at that, the number of callers are going down because people don't, you know, don't call anymore. You know, mm. the number of text messages go up, social media engagement's going up, but that's bloody hard to fill a, you know, five-hour talkback show with. And so the pool, the pool of potential um, people appearing on the radio is getting smaller. Therefore, the quality is you, you can't be as choosy. And what ends up happening is you end up filling with putting anyone on the radio. That's dangerous. You know, not only is it dangerous, it it it, it does not serve the audience well. Uh, and so it's it's moved a long way from kind of the foundation of the format back in, in this country in the in, in the 70s and 80s. So what, what we're looking at doing is going, well, instead of going, what do we need to fill instead of instead of a metric being for a for a host, you know, that they that they um a step that they they determine whether or not their show has been successful, instead of that metric being by ha- how many callers, you know, or how many reactions they've had, mm. is to be more um may completely change that metric and have it be much more audience focused. So the, instead of instead of how many callers, you, you know, whether or not you've got a full board or not, it's, you know, the the quality of the call, of the people that are responding, the, the, the actual value of the content that you're putting out each quarter hour, you know, having those metrics instead, um, f- refocusing the whole station onto kind of value, f- the value proposition for the listener as opposed to kind of the host feeling good when they walk out the door that, hey, I had somebody to play with and the phones weren't empty. Um, I think that's where we've got to with the format. I think um, Talkback, to be honest, is on a limited lifespan. I think eventually it will die. Um, I think talk radio for it to continue and to, for it to for it to survive, it needs to pivot. Um, we're going to try some things at today, which hopefully will be successful. Some will, some won't. Um, but we'll work it out as we go and make those tweaks. All right, we'll just take a quick break and come back and and talk about you know the, this idea of talkback having a limited lifespan and how you move from that to this uh, longer projection. The Fold is brought to you by O-Media, making brands unmissable and public spaces better across Aotearoa, with over 4,000 out-of-home advertising sites nationwide across both street furniture and retail centres. I'm super grateful to O-Media for enabling us to make unmissable connections with Kiwis. Raising capital or taking your business to the world? Investment Fix has the lowdown on everything you need to make it happen. This season, we're exploring the US market the opportunities it offers, what it takes to grow a business there, and the best way to approach investors. Join some of the superstars of the investment and business world as they share advice from their time in the US so you can make your mahi count in this massive market. The Investment Fix Podcast, brought to you by Invest New Zealand. Tune in today. Ready to rediscover the joys of cycling? With over 300 kilometres of cycle paths across Tamaki Makoto, Jumping on your bike and going for a ride is such a fun way to discover the city from a different perspective. Cycling is getting more and more popular across Auckland, so now's a great time to join the hype and give cycling a go. Head to at.govt forward slash cycling to find your nearest cycleway today. We're back with Dallas Gurney now. What I'd like to ask is... You know, you've you you made reference before the break to, to a limited lifespan for talkback as we know it, and yet in in interviews prior, you've talked about this being a five, ten, fifteen year mm. project. You know, radio the, its demise has been predicted for a long time, mm-hmm. and yet of all the the sort of traditional media formats as we knew them in say the year two thousand, it's been by far the most robust. Still, it feels like there must be some kind of slow attrition coming notwithstanding the fact that every single media form claims increased uh, audience every single survey, yeah. which I'm suspicious about. But that's another podcast topic. You know, what what are the sort of longer term intentions of this? Or, or to put it another way, how do you express this beyond the FM dial? This is audio, speech audio in particular, is our strength, right? And I think when you look at, at, at um, who has resourced the organisations that have resourced, you know, digital storytelling, 
very few, uh, it's not radio stations, you know. Um, the radio station podcasts are generally cut-ups of what they've done on the air. So I think there's a huge opportunity there. And at launch, you know, um, and, and now in mid-March, you know, alongside the terrestrial products, there'll be a whole rollout of different of, of podcasts, different story, stories, new Kiwi, largely Kiwi, Kiwi stories of a high quality that we can be proud of. And so I think, you know, we, we need to build that. We want to be, have that reputation as the, as, as the people who do, who tell great, great Kiwi stories, you know, for the year. So that's, um, that's to come for sure. And is that using the same talent that, you know, cause you've, you've obviously spent a, a ton of money recruiting yep. these bold face names. So, so you know, for example, will we see the likes of Tober and, and Lord Lloyd Burr potentially having other channels that aren't just their, sh- you know, show up, do your show, and, and you're done for the day? Yeah, potentially, um, but also a, re- a, a range of different talent. I mean, I, I think you know, you've got for us, you've got a great opportunity to try try out some new things in the digital space and see how they work. Uh, and that includes new people. So I think it's a mix of both. But I mean, what what we're doing is investing actual money. Whereas in the, you know in, in the past, it's been a bit of a side hustle for media organisations. You know, oh, and you can do a podcast about you know wrestling or <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas kind of we, if we can take a bit more of a thoughtful approach to it and approach it in the same way that we approach the programming for our radio channels, you know, I think we've got a great opportunity there to kind of take the lead. And um, I think that would be exciting. I mean, there's no lack of content. There's no lack of podcasts, but I think there's a real lack of New Zealand content, you know, really interesting New Zealand stories. And largely the really good ones are put out by, you know, digital newsrooms, you know, stuff for NZME, uh, The Herald. And I'm going, what? You know, this is radio's bag. We should be good at this. You know, and RNZ, of course. RNZ do a great job as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's talk about talent because, you know, I think that's been the thing that's been most – Eye-opening and, and really the biggest signal to to the market that this is a major in, investment. Um, you know, what, why? You know, d- just talk about the about the lineup and what drove. You know, the the most notable thing is that the the biggest names of it have come across from three, come across from television, albeit you know. The AIM show, show was a hybrid uh, to to create this this new brand. You know, what 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 is the thinking there and why? Why do you think that this will drive success in a way that 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 uh, radio live lineup, which was you know more of a traditional talk setup, uh, didn't? I mean, we wanted a radio station that reflected New Zealand. So if you look at our lineup, uh, it's fifty fifty, kind of broadly fifty fifty male female split. Um, we're bringing through some some new um, some new talent, you know, and, uh, through and and you know. Young Maori and Pacific voices, um, and giving them opportunities that, that, that perhaps they wouldn't have had uh, in the format before. So that was really important to us in building the lineup. You know, having one that felt New Zealand, felt Kiwi. I mean, being Kiwi has got to be part of this. You know, that's got to be in our DNA. We've got to sound like New Zealand. So that was that was one consideration. I mean, the the fact that these people, the, the I mean, uh, that a number of the personalities that we have on today came from TV3 is actually a fluke, really. <laughs> I mean, it was, to be honest, pretty much everyone I approached said yes, because I think they bought they bought into the vision. You know, they bought into the fact that, you know, there is a different way to do talk radio and let's give it a go. Uh, and, you know, hopefully it'll work. You know, I mean, I... <laughs> That they they got it pretty much straight away. Um, and in some ways, it makes sense, and that they're, they're, they're joined up as mm. a group. Like if you are a, a TV three viewer, they're all familiar to you. Hopefully, that creates a stickiness throughout the day. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, if you look at some, I think we've got a great mix of people who haven't done radio before, um, but who are known for various things, you'd put Tova in that camp. Um, and then you've got, at the same time, you can take a few risks with some people like that by having more established people who have done the format before, people like Duncan, you know, people like, you know, Lear, um, Panapa, Rachel Smalley. These are known, you know, and, and so it enables you in other day parts to, you know, Lloyd Bird doing Drive is a good example. I mean, we, we put him on the air, you know, at the end of last year on Magic Talk and, 
um, he did a superb job and he took to the format like a tuck to water, you know. And so I'm really excited about if we if we can get the platform right for him about um, about what he can achieve because there's two key aspects to, I think, you know, having a high-performing talk radio station. Yes, it's about the talent on air and off air, but it's also about the platform. And at the, you know, what, what we had potentially with this format in the past is, you know, they were out of kilter. Either we didn't have the right talent or the platform wasn't quite right. So hopefully with a reset and a blank sheet of paper, we can get both of those things humming. <laughs> Just as a quick aside, yeah. are you scared of the platform? Sean's platform? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, Sean's going in the opposite di- direction to the way we're going, so I'm not. No. But good on him. I mean, God, you know full well how hard it is, you know, starting up a media organisation. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if anyone had told me. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. So the thing that's interesting is, you know, for all your talk of uh, pivoting to the centre, you know, I take you at your, at your word on that, but the recruiting of Tova, like – Say what you want about Mike Hosking. He is an absolutely terrifying, uh, yeah. you know, interviewer. When, when he, he when he's when you've got the right subject, you know, he people cower rightly um, yeah. before him. Tova is one of the very few people in New Zealand who has a similar kind yeah. of just depth of knowledge. Um, you know, the pace that her mind works. There is something that has happened during the pandemic where it feels like. Mike Hosking has gone from being someone who is sceptical, you know, leans right and is sceptical about what a, any kind of Labour government might do. So there's something that, that sort of feels like it's changed a little bit in the tone uh, to the point where when Jacinda Ardern decided not to to take that weekly, which it was a massive story mm. really, um, that, you know, people, there wasn't, the, the, the reaction to that, and some of it was timing, was, was, was somewhat muted you know, there must be a part of you that that kind of relishes the idea that you've got an absolute weapon to go up against the biggest, um, you know, opponent I, to, in, to in be, all of media. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think Mike's core core audience is not going to want to listen to our station. So, I, I, I mean, I don't see, I mean, I keep telling Jason this, we're not in competition. And he goes, yes, but you're on 90.2, to your point. He said, yeah, but that's because we want to give it the best shot of winning, Right. When you're way up on at the top of the dial, Radio Live was there for a long time. Or yeah, but or, you could have swapped that out with any of your stations. Rock's been quite I, quite successful at ninety point two for a long time. One hundred percent. But they've also got a very very passionate audience. I mean, rock listeners are probably the most passionate bunch of of listeners, right? So they'll move. They'll move up the dial. To well, you'll to you'll the find out. Yeah. But I mean, I guess the, the the point being that while they're different audiences, the the fundamental of big political issue hmm. happens. Who do you want to hear putting the blowtorch on whoever is at its mm. centre? You now have Tover O'Brien and Mike Hosking, neighbours mm. on the FM dial in Auckland, mm. and with a very, you know, both of them probably you'd argue about where they are in the top three or four of, of, of interviewers on political issues in particular. So, and this is where in some respects that the sort of, you know, like that's why these these the the competition to my mind is is in radio as opposed to just everything yeah. as the ARA said is that it is a bit of a zeitgeisty mindshare thing and if you can if Tova can rise above and create some of those kind of electric exchanges that get clipped and shared and um, and all the rest of it then there is an opportunity for the brand to just sort of grow. Yeah, it might, I think it could, could probably steal some, maybe not the core cause of the audience, yeah, but, I but, think, but people I mean, are listening again, to it yeah, the because com- they're ravenous about politics. Exactly. The, co- the competition, I think, is on the margins. I mean, you've got people that listen to ZB because they subscribe to a particular political philosophy that um, Mike and a number of other you know, ZB hosts subscribe to. And, and they're, they're probably, they're, they're at the very you know, centre, the core of that audience, P1 listeners, we call them. Then you've got a whole bunch of P2 listeners that come in because of news events, you know, and they could listen to ZB, they could listen to Radio New Zealand. That, that, those audience, that audience will, you know, we're hoping um, will find some time to land on us and they'll like what they hear and potentially they, they become, you know, core audience for us. I mean, that's definitely, you know, a goal for sure. Well, one thing that, um, and we're, we're almost done, but I, I, I think, 
it's interesting that you're you're not just the boss of the on air talent of the station. You're the boss of a relatively large newsroom, which is being built out now to Fledgling. sort of. Tw- tw- about 20 people. 20 people. Yeah, that's, that's our whole newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, fledgling well, fair. But, 230 you know. at uh, News Hub. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, but, but that, that's, that does put it in context. But mm. what is, is, that, is that all for radio? Because one thing which I think that, you know, a criticism you could level at ZB is it's underinvested in digital. Like it doesn't, the, the audio is quite hard to find. The, um, the reporting, the very, you know, it's got some amazing reporters, um, particularly in, in the gallery. Their work, you know, the, the the platform hasn't had a redesign in a while. It feels like if you're looking to go and take a march on that opponent that's not an opponent, um, mm-hmm. that's a place where you could, you know, invest in in digital and and kind of uh, get the the today brand yeah. out there. Absolutely. I mean, I think digital is definite. I mean, my focus, to be honest, is on digital audio because I I look at it and I go. We're never going to be the Herald or stuff, you know. We if we if we try to play in that space, we'll end up being 18th. You know, you you've got a much bigger, you know, you you you've got you know how hard it is to build, you know, uh, a website and to get your traffic up. And um, I I don't really see us competing in that space. But what we are good at is audio storytelling. That's where our expertise is. And I, th- I see that as a big opportunity for us to really compete in that space and take a leadership role uh, in that space. Um, but having said that, I think you will find that our digital presence, the website, the uh, our social in that, uh, I mean, you have to do it well, you know, especially if you're saying you, you're the talk station of the future. It cannot be something that is, is, is um, kind of on the back burner or, you know, um, or you know something you get to if you've got time. It has to be done properly with a proper strategy and and um, with proper resource behind it um, because you know ultimately it helps support your brand. Um, so yeah, I, I, the, 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 that's the long answer to your question. The short answer is yeah. I mean we 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 see digital as an opportunity and want to you know want to compete in that space. Uh, well, it's it's a real. I mean this this is this is a hill that. No one has climbed basically uh, over the over the past thirty years. It's that's the the sort of hardest challenge in radio, and uh, you know, you're, you guys are, at the very least are taking a massive swing, which is uh, which is I exciting mean, to see. Cam Cam said to me, and I, I I this is probably what got me over the line. The most important thing is have some fun, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to have some fun. At least we're making it interesting, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, I, I, the. New Zealand's radio is, is you know, that things don't swing around as much as they do uh, in other countries. You know, like you don't have as much movement of talent and um, stations kind of rising and falling. And I think that the the in some ways that is because there's this kind of demilitarized thing where people just accept it. And the, the fact of this is, is just a big, exciting place. So uh, we'll be listening and looking out for it. So thanks so much for coming on board. There. Duncan, thanks so much for your time, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, that was Dallas Gurney, who is the Director of News and Talk at Me- MediaWorks on The Fold. Uh, I want to thank Vodafone for making The Fold possible. I want to thank Tiahe Butler for producing and engineering me with, with huge patience and diplom. Uh, I want to thank Jane Yee. It's actually her birthday right now. Uh, so happy birthday, Jane. Love working with you and uh, the spin-off members for making the spin-off possible. Cheers. That was The Fold, brought to you by our partners at O-Media, making brands unmissable and public spaces better across Aotearoa. Huge thanks to O-Media for sponsoring this episode of The Fold and enabling us to make unmissable connections with Kiwis. Talo for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spin-Off. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spinoff member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spinoff Podcast Network.